Hello YouTube. I want to talk briefly about the situation that I had to deal with a number of years ago and how it affected my life. My wife was a victim of rape and incest for at least 16 years, if not much longer. She married me and she didn't disclose this to me. Those assaults that she suffered by members of her family were drug facilitated. As a result of having grown up as a child in an environment like that, she came to view those behaviors as acceptable. Came to the point where she even desired those things based on reviewing her search history. About four years into our marriage, she drugged me while I was sleeping and she used a knife to cut my face. I didn't realize that it happened at the time. It took me 11 years six years after she had died to realize that that experience had in fact happened. I looked closely at my face one day and I realized the lines on my forehead weren't furrow lines, they were scars. Only one person ever mentioned it to me, a supervisor at work. I couldn't get legal aid and my house ended up in a manufactured default. We were burglarized, and I had another person who I was responsible for who was also a victim of attacks, not sexual attacks, but chemical attacks by her and by another relative in her family. Despite the fact that I was responsible for a special victim, and I myself was a special victim, I was turned down for legal assistance repeatedly. I applied five separate times with three different offices. They were all part of the same legal aid office that was mandated and operating under mandate of the Legal Service Corporation, which operates and is funded under congressional mandate. My credit ended up being ruined, ended up being homeless, and I ended up having to move into transient housing where I had further problems with people. Came to the point I didn't even want to go outside. The same people who were responsible for turning my spouse into a monster weaponized social services and law enforcement with false reporting to see me harassed and further traumatized along with other people. And we couldn't get any assistance. Despite overwhelming evidence, they wouldn't prosecute any of these people or arrest them. And that discussion for why they wouldn't prosecute them is for another time. But what ended up happening to me, because I couldn't get legal assistance or retaliation protection to prevent these people from using false reporting as a weapon to have me swatted, was I ended up losing everything. I lost my job. I got very sick because I had an opioid addiction that had been forced on me while I was sleeping and through sexual relations. And I went through withdrawal after she died and ended up having adrenal insufficiency that lasted two years. I was having asthma attacks and anxiety attacks. And there were a couple of times I almost suffocated to death and I ended up having to go to the hospital because I was under cardiac stress. I didn't have any idea what she had done to me and all these things happened and I tried to get community health support. I tried to get medication for anxiety and depression as I made these terrible discoveries. People would tell me things that she had done and um, I couldn't get any support because racial and gender stereotypes were applied to me. People saw a white male and they assumed that I came from money, that I had people that was, you know, were taking care of me, that were helping with my circumstances. And the fact is that that was the farthest thing from the truth. I came from a terrible family that did not support its children. It preyed on them. And my wife came from a family that was as bad or much worse than the family that I came from. So neither one of us had any social support. 
She killed herself intentionally on my birthday to be with her abuser because she had developed Stockholm Syndrome from decades of sexual abuse and drug-facilitated sexual assault that went from being non-consensual to being conditioned behavior where she sought out her abuser because of the drug dependence. And nothing that I did could get justice. The police wouldn't even arrest any of the people involved. They wouldn't prosecute the other people who were involved with her. They were still alive. And these people continued to try to get access to children. Her mother continued to try to get access to children. When she couldn't get my children, she tried to get a stranger's little girl. And she succeeded. The mother and father had dumped off the child and she was caring for this little girl that looked remarkably strikingly like her. And I just couldn't believe it that somebody that young could fall through the cracks and end up in the custody of a person who had allowed all three of their children to be molested for decades by her husband. She herself... My mother-in-law had come from a family of people that thought that these behaviors were okay, as well as her husband. And it was just a generational problem. And the deal is that because everybody involved was adults, nobody would do anything to prosecute these people, despite the fact that they were transgressing the age barrier and going after children.